In 1969, Da Nang, a small coastal town in central Vietnam, was the place in the world with the highest concentration of landmines. Da Nang today, though, is full of tourists. Millions of people from around the world flock to Da Nang for its pristine beaches, cheap living, great food scene and welcoming culture. 50 years ago, Da Nang was the US Air Force's largest base in Vietnam. The landmines were vital in repelling attacks by the Viet Cong. But how did one of the most militarized places in the world become such a successful tourist destination only five decades later? And how did Vietnam go from war-torn, poverty-stricken and communist to a vital US ally and upcoming economic powerhouse? The modern history of Vietnam began in 1887. The French, having militarily defeated the armies of the Day Nam dynasty, who had ceded Saigon to them in 1862, formally established the colony of French Indochina, making up what is today Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia. French colonial rule established an economy based on the export of rice, rubber and coal. Saigon boomed into a major trading post, but the Vietnamese benefited little from colonialism and resentment grew over the exploitative and repressive practices of the French. If you were a relatively well-to-do traveller looking for a place to stay in London in 1914, you might choose the Drayton Court Hotel in Ealing. It's well located and reasonably priced, and your guidebook says the food, standard British fare, is of adequate quality. Perhaps after a long day of travel, you settle down to sample the menu. The food, as advertised, is typically British. The cook definitely isn't though. Ho Chi Minh was born in 1890 in a remote region of central Vietnam. His father worked in the French colonial administration but generally despised the French occupation of his country. This inspired Ho, who from a young age was attracted to anti-French and socialist ideals. After receiving a French education, Ho traveled abroad, first to France, then to the US and later Britain. He funded his travels working as a chef, including at the Ritz-Carlton in Paris and the Drayton Court Hotel in London. Europe was a hotbed of political radicalism in the first decades of the 20th century. Although inspired by the revolutionary ideas coming out of Western Europe, it was the Bolshevik takeover of Russia following World War I that inspired Ho Chi Minh to travel to the Soviet Union. There he learned firsthand the centralized and collective economic model of the USSR. Upon returning to Vietnam in 1941, Ho Chi Minh established the communist Viet Minh movement. Its objective was to oust the French and install a Soviet-style political and economic system in Vietnam. When, in 1954, the French general Henri Navarre studied the mountains surrounding the valley of Dien Bien Phu in western Vietnam close to the border with Laos, he only had one decision to make. Could you get an artillery piece to the top of them? Navarre concluded that you couldn't he made the wrong call. France ruled Vietnam for nearly a hundred years. Like all empires, the French presence in Vietnam was inherently extractive. Vietnam's domestic industries, including agriculture and textiles, suffered during the colonial period. Colonial rule stunted Vietnam's economic development, preventing the establishment of political and economic institutions that could develop the country or act as a buttress against the rising tide of communism. Poverty in Vietnam bred resentment, which only grew throughout the first half of the 20th century. Ho Chi Minh's communist guerrilla movement, the Viet Minh, which promised not only national liberation, but also a more equitable and just economic model, was perfectly positioned to capitalize on this resentment. As the Viet Minh's strength grew, 
the French decided on confronting them in a decisive battle in the valley of Dien Bien Phu. The French were defeated, their colonial rule ending in Southeast Asia the same year. Chinese invasion there has supposedly ended, but the Vietnamese appear to be taking no chances. We have a first-hand report from Hanoi from ABC's Jim Laurie. The Chinese invasion lasted 27 days. It was a poor man's war. Little else but infantry and artillery were used. The Chinese set out to teach Vietnam a lesson. On the 17th of February, 1979, China invaded Vietnam. Thousands of Chinese troops poured across the border, engaging well-dug-in Vietnamese forces in the mountainous terrain. The war lasted only about a month, and Vietnam won. Although in the West we feel that the Vietnam War is the defining historical event in the story of modern Vietnam, for many Vietnamese, the 1979 Chinese invasion was almost as critical. Chinese and Vietnamese history is heavily intertwined. However, Vietnam had experienced centuries of interference, conquest and division at the hands of the Chinese. The 19th and 20th centuries may have seen Western powers control and dictate the economics of Vietnam, but the 1979 Chinese invasion renewed fears of Chinese domination. China and Vietnam may both have been communist, but this didn't mean that Vietnam was willing to sign away its hard-won economic autonomy. The United States is therefore prepared, as the President determines, to take all necessary steps, including the use of armed forces. America actually won the Vietnam War, although not until the year 2000. The stated aim of the US in Vietnam was to prevent the country falling to communism. In this regard, the war failed. However, what America really wanted was to contain the spread of communism to the rest of Southeast Asia by ensuring a barrier against Chinese communist expansion and to retain a market for American-made goods in what was the former French Indochina. In this regard, when President Clinton landed in Hanoi in November 2000, he was able to secure a victory for the US that nearly 15 years of vicious fighting had not. Vietnam's economy had faltered in the decades following the American withdrawal. Soviet-inspired state-directed economics hindered innovation and entrepreneurship. War-damaged housing, industries and infrastructure also held Vietnam back, as did the millions of landmines and unexploded ordnance strewn across the country. Vietnam in the 1970s and 80s was cripplingly poor. And only 24 hours after East Germans were told they could go anywhere, anytime, the Soviet Union said, that was a sensible move. In 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed. The fall of the USSR showed the limitations and inbuilt deficiencies of the socialist economic model. The Vietnamese Communist Party, seeing the economic failings of its largest sponsor, knew it must change direction or face a similar fate. From the late 1980s, the Vietnamese Communist Party adopted the policy of Doi Moi, meaning renovation. The country began market reforms, allowing the registration of private companies and encouraging foreign investment. With Doi Moi, the Vietnamese Communist Party expected a trickle towards a more open and business-friendly economy. What they got was a flood of capitalism. Almost overnight, the adoption of the Doi Moi reforms transformed Vietnam's economic fortunes. By the early 2000s, 73% of Vietnam's economy was privately owned. Foreign investment poured in, especially taking advantage of Vietnam's cheap labour market and large working age population. Sectors such as electronics and textiles boomed. Vietnam also opened up to international tourism, quickly becoming a trendy vacation destination. 
areas such as Da Nang were cleared of mines and quickly developed into a beach city complete with high-rise hotels. Vietnam had been economically transformed by Doi Moi. However, it would take more than just economic reforms for Vietnam to rise as an economic power. Hi Barbie! Hi Ken! Hi Barbie! Hi Barbie! Hi Barbie! The Barbie movie was perhaps the biggest cinema hit of 2023, but not in Vietnam. In fact, no one in Vietnam went to see the Barbie movie. It was banned by the Central Propaganda Department of the Vietnamese Communist Party. The reason for the banning? A map of Barbie land. China had also undertaken economic reforms following the collapse of the Soviet Union. By the turn of the millennium, China had become the second largest economy in the world and an economic powerhouse dominating East Asia. However, the country's rise as an economic juggernaut was not benign, but was accompanied by a more assertive foreign policy. Ensuring China's territorial position became one of the paramount goals of the Chinese Communist Party. China has long been strategically weak, over-dependent on foreign imports of food and fuel. Ensuring overseas supply chains and controlling trade choke points became vital for China as it developed. This brought the country into direct confrontation with Vietnam, who saw China's attempt to dominate the South China Sea as a direct threat to its own territorial integrity. Historical weariness of China, combined with China's overt move to exert influence in the South China Sea, began pushing Vietnam towards building stronger ties with the US. Vietnam's economic reforms had already brought it into closer alignment with America. Now, their mutual distrust of China meant that Vietnam and the United States shared a common geostrategic foe. Vietnam today sees its economic integration with the US as a key part of its plan to become a fully developed nation. However, Vietnam's security alignment with America and fears of China may mean the country becomes a full part of America's economic sphere, an enormous shift in global dynamics, especially considering the two countries fought one of the most brutal wars of the 20th century only five decades ago.